All right, well, it's the end of the trip, the Arizona trip, that is. We got the F-12 sitting right over there. We got a 430 Spider. We got a Lamborghini Diablo. We're here at the stables outside of Scottsdale, where, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> you store your car. Check this out, way in the corner. Ferrari F40. God, I love this car. It is absolutely amazing. Maybe one day I'll get a chance to drive something like this iconic classic 1980s ferrari we got another diablo look at this one it looks to be in really good condition the paint looks fantastic oh we got a 458 speciale look at that god i love this car i love it in white with the gray stripes that's a good spec got testarossa are we seeing a mercy yep there's a Mercy back there. Look at that. Man, this is like Marshall Goldman. <laughs> Although these cars aren't really for sale. We got an M6. Look at that. My favorite generation of the SL. Got a BMW Z8. Got another C8 up there. What do we have here? 308, 328? I don't know. Oh, look at that. We got a Mercy here as well. Wow. 308. Man, I could walk around here all day, babe. This is sweet. Did you see that 40 in the corner? Yeah, but that one right there. We got wifey. Pretty as always. Is a Uh, I don't know. No, because we would probably see a Ferrari F50 here somewhere. But it is time. We got to get actually get an Uber, get to the airport, fly home to uh, the first snow that is reported for tomorrow. Rocking a pink suitcase, by the way. Short goodbye to the F12. We'll see it back in uh, almost wintry Pittsburgh. I love the 430, by the way. That is such a gorgeous Ferrari. Congrats to Stradman, finally getting his Stradale. Look at this. Lamborghini Diablo, another one. Oh, we got a PJ. I want a PJ. One day. One day. So from desert in 85 degrees and non-stop sun to 30 degrees and the first snow of the season in Pittsburgh. One snowy M5 that I was too tired to put in the garage and move the Raptor <laughs> last night when we came home. Time to do that now. In a matter of seconds in the YouTube world, the snow is gone and also all of the cars. Look at our driveway, it's completely empty. The only car we have left is the M5. The F12 is of course still on its way back from Arizona. The Raptor is actually lent to one of our friends just for a short period of time and my wife is driving the black F-150. So we're gonna focus on the M5. We actually have two modifications that are happening to the M5 today in this video. One is a lot bigger than the other now since mod number two has not arrived with ups yet we're going to focus on mod number one and as you might be able to tell the camera is facing the plate of the car we do indeed have a personalized plate that just arrived in the mail and i'm not going to waste any time the plate is <laughs> yeah that's right there's no mistaking what engine is in the M5. I actually wasn't sure of which plate was going to be arriving in the mail because I picked a couple of options and I was surprised that this even showed as being available. I guess no one in PA with a 10 cylinder engine in their car ever thought of this. And no, I didn't want like auto vlog two or something boring like that. Now one issue with this is if I ever get rid of this car, I have no plans of that, of course, I just got it. But if I ever get rid of it, trade it in or something like that, I guess it's gonna have to be a Huracan or something because otherwise I can't reuse this plate. I mean, I can, but it'd be kind of stupid to have a plate like this if the car doesn't have a 10 cylinder. And I don't know if it's coming out on video, but it might look like the plate is a little bent and that is because it is a little bent. So the plate came in this envelope and when my mailbox closes, the whole envelope, you see that? 
with the plate in it was stuck. Like I opened it and I couldn't get it out, so I had to bend it to even get it out. Man, I'm getting a little collection of plates here. And by the way, someone sent me this in the mail like a long time ago to my P.O. box. I need to get this up. It's actually pretty cool. Right next to my uh, you know, fake Autoblog plate that actually someone else sent to me in the mail. Put it here for now. Well, all we gotta do now is wait. Where is this damn UPS truck? Where you at, UPS? Well, it's the next day. All the cars are here once again. The package did arrive. It's right there, but it arrived late. It, later than UPS had said it was gonna arrive, so when it actually got here yesterday, and because of winter, it was dark. We couldn't install it, but we can today. All right, well, let's just open this up. Yes, I've opened it already, and check this out. From my friends at Carbontastic, we have a brand new steering wheel in carbon fiber. And look at the girth of this thing. This thing is beefy. I haven't taken the stock steering wheel off yet, but I'm pretty sure that this is heavier. Oh yeah, look at this thing. It looks amazing. It's got a flat bottom, unlike the uh, stock M Sport steering wheel. Got perforated leather right here on both sides, of course. We got the M stripe up top. This looks so awesome. I'm excited to get this installed. So before we take the stock steering wheel off, let's just take a look at it and compare. Uh, although the car is in very good condition to be used, you can see here, and I, what I've learned is that this is a pretty common wear area on the steering wheel. We have it on both sides, even down here. It's like a matte finish that's just peeling off. We're gonna jump right into it here, but I'm gonna leave a link in the description right now so if you guys want to go check it out, they have steering wheels for pretty much every car. They have it for the trucks as well, so I'm actually interested in getting it for the F-150. So the first thing that we have to do is disconnect the battery, at least the uh, negative terminal here. It says we're removing the whole steering wheel and the airbag. <laughs> I don't want a scenario where this uh, accidentally lands in my face. <laughs> All right, so we got a 10 millimeter here. There we go. Put that out of the way here safely. <laughs> Another thing that we're going to use, we actually find here in the BMW little first aid kit box looking thing, and that's a screwdriver. Nope, that's not going to work. Yeah, maybe it will. Yeah, it will. By the way, here we have them right next to each other. Now, I don't know if this is coming out on camera, but way down in that hole there, we got a wire that needs pushed, and that's these wires right here on each side and that's what actually keeps the airbag in place. So to remove the airbag and be able to access the steering wheel and removing the whole steering wheel, we gotta remove this first. And what I'm noticing is that this BMW provided one. Yeah, it's, no, it goes in there. No, it doesn't. It's a bit too thick, gotta get a thinner one. So we're gonna use this uh, good old cobalt here. And I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So I got it stuck in that hole. You can see the actual screwdriver right there. I'm using a flathead and you see how this moves when I push down on it? That is what I'm gonna have to do to uh, the stock steering wheel. Yeah, see the hole is right here. Now this might require some uh, finagling and some time. So I'm just gonna put you guys up here on the passenger window. wasn't too hard. I thought it was going to be harder than that. All right, so we have the airbag off. So all we got to do now is disconnect this. I think that's all we got to do now. So this is what uh, E60 M5, at least, airbag looks like. All right, so now what we got to do is loosen this main bolt that holds the actual steering wheel uh, onto the column here. And I'm using a 5 8 What I should have is probably a deep socket or like an extension. I don't know exactly how this is going to work, but we'll try our best here. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it's on there, all right. <clears throat> I'm trying to hold the steering wheel at the same time because I don't want to break the steering lock. So I can't really use both hands on the ratchet, that is. <clears throat> Man, it is on there. Holy crap. Well, this bolt is on here like white on rice, and I'm not strong enough to get it off, so... Say hello to my little friend! Yeah, what's up now, bitch? No. <laughs> I stripped the bolt. I stripped the damn bolt. I mean, yeah, by hand, no, I can't really turn it, but when I put it back on the ratchet, see this? It's stripped. I stripped the bolt on my freaking steering wheel. And look at all this metal flake dust and stuff that's inside of here now. Oh, Mike, Mike, Mike. See, this is why you don't work on your own cars, Mike. This is why you take it to professionals. This is why you only stand in front of the camera. Goof off and just do your thing. Don't try to fix it yourself. Like, why? I mean, I guess good news is that I can just put the airbag back in here, connect it, and, you know, I mean, I can still drive the car, but I can't put this new nice steering wheel on there, though. You know, I mean, I'm done with this. I'm not going to try to drill this bolt out, obviously, since I couldn't even <laughs> unbolt it normally. God, man, I'm such an idiot. But besides the fact that this bolt must be really, really on there. And yes, I am using the right socket. It's the same ones that I've been using here manually before I got the impact wrench, the power tool. God, I'm so bummed out and I'm so embarrassed. Like this. Ugh. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna still gonna upload this debacle here of my failure, like I always do when I try to work on my own cars and I mess stuff up here. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, we're gonna have to do a separate video where we get this gigantic bolt off somehow and then finally get the new steering wheel on. So, fuck. Mm, damn it. So they're obviously busy working with uh, other clients that probably haven't messed up their own steering wheel bolt. Again, though, all we need to do is just, you know, connect the airbag on there and the negative terminal and the battery, and uh, we're fine with the old steering wheel, but I don't want the old steering wheel. I want the new steering wheel! <laughs> so pissed at myself right now. I mean, I try to Google this. <laughs> I can't find anyone else that's actually done this before. And yes, for, <laughs> for the record, I'm not that dumb. I know the difference in directions, and I was trying to get the bolt off. I wasn't tightening it. I know that for a fact. The bolt must just be like really, really, really on there. But either way, I mean, I feel like an extreme dumbass that I did this. At least you guys get some entertainment and you can blast me in the comments and, you know, explain to me how I'm not a car guy and all that stuff. You know, I know that that's some value for you guys at least. Dumbass, Mike, dumbass. Yes, I agree with you guys, dumbass. What do I do now? I'm afraid to just muscle that in there. Got to make sure that I... I mean, it clicked on the one side, though. That's not nice. What? What? <laughs> See? Even Siri. Siri thinks I'm an idiot. What are you trying to tell me? I'm not sure I understand. Likewise. Bye. Hi, honey. Okay, bye, honey. She's like, I'm divorcing you, dumbass. Now I can't get this thing off. What a day, man. What a day. At least I get a video out of it. Came off easily earlier. No one wants to be like Mike right now. I know that much. What the 
Well, at least I got this thing figured out, sort of. I uh, just gotta there. All right, so <laughs> got the airbag back on there. Finally. I was messing around with this a uh, whole lot longer than you guys even know. And when I disconnected the battery, I closed the trunk. So now, I gotta open it manually somehow. Okay, so just to clarify here, mistake number two was that I closed the trunk lid without even thinking about that the actual battery that I just disconnected is in the trunk and there's no keyhole to open the trunk, at least not on this E60 M5. So according to the owner's manual, you have to do is remove this rear seat somehow and then there's gonna be a little manual latch over here somewhere that you can pull and that'll open the trunk <laughs> so this whole day has been like this gigantic failure um, but we got to fix it so yeah all right so I'm supposed to pull it up yep and then remove the whole rear seat somehow Maybe I should move my seat up. I can't do that because the battery is not connected. Crap. Good God in heaven. There. All right, where is this emergency release? It's supposed to be here. Here, look at that. Why would someone put this zip tie looking thing over the actual release come on man not even i'm that stupid all right so I cut the stupid zip lock let's pull this there yes thank god it worked so now all we gotta do is uh, connect this terminal back to the battery then i can at least drive this thing airbags plopping up in my face either all right so I'm just gonna get the back seat back in order here and then uh, <laughs> we'll end this catastrophic video all right so it's been about 45 minutes <laughs> I wasn't gonna film this part I was just gonna put the you know back seat back in here but if you think that was complicated this is the most complicated thing ever and the problem is getting the seat belt through this little or seatbelt buckle thing here through these little holes here in the seat I managed to get this one in on the passenger side but it's so hard to get this freaking thing in here and I, I try to just stick them out through here but then I can't get the seat back enough to be able to click it back in so <sighs> that's what I'm dealing with now Come on, man. It's like a d doesn't want. P Come on, get through there, dude. Boom. Yeah. Uh. Prick. Uh. I hate this car. All right, kids can be safe. God, what a hassle. Just because I closed the trunk after disconnecting the battery that's in the trunk. Well, at least the steering wheel is really, really good looking, although uh, it's not mounted in my car. <laughs> Huge thanks to Carbon Tastic for sending me this. I promise we'll get it installed here shortly when I can get the proper professional help that I need to put it on, fix this bolt issue but with that being said regarding the BMW tomorrow myself and Brian Pittsburgh views are installing an awesome modification for the f-150 so if you've been waiting for f-150 content it's happening tomorrow or in the next video and hopefully we'll have the Arizona video up as well I know it's been kind of scarce with uploads here lately but it's coming I promise you guys uh, and I thank you so much for sticking around in this video where again we confirm that I shouldn't be working on my own cars Oh well, I tried. 
<laughs> if this is the first time you're stopping by this channel and you haven't already and you feel like you kind of want to, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.